everybody, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be painting from direct observation and I thought it would kind of be fun to take you along and see some of the process, some of the items that I use, and the way that I've set up my art studio in order to paint fine art oil paintings. So today's painting is from direct observation. So I've taken items from around my house. Today I've used some items from my kitchen and I've put them in my still life box. If you're curious as to how I've made my still life box, I do have a video on that process which I will link in the card above and as well in the description box below. So one of the very first things that I think about is making sure that I'm choosing items that are going to look really good in my still life box. So I'm thinking about are they going to interact with each other? Are their colors too contrasting? Are they not contrasted enough? Are they nicely rounded objects? Am I going to be able to show form really well by making sure that I have really good shadows and really good lights and really nice gradients? I want to make sure that I'm taking note of what kind of light is going on around the room. Now, this is a little bit different in my setup because I am filming a YouTube video, so I have a lot of studio lights going on. The whole point of setting up a still life box is to make sure that you're controlling the light, right? So that you've got good light and good shadows. But if you have too many lights going on around in the room, it can really mess up what's going on in your still life box and make some of those things a little bit harder to determine. So one of the things that I do is I actually have a little tea towel and I set it up and I put it in front of my still life box just to make sure that I'm blocking out any extra light from my overhead lights or some of my studio lights while I'm filming here, making sure that they're not interacting or changing anything inside of my still life box. In my studio I do use Old Holland paint, I just find it is just such great quality. It was the paint that I was trained on so I'm very used to it, I understand the way that it works, it's very highly pigmented and it's just really good quality paint. I always lay out the palette the exact same way, the exact same colors, and all of my colors no matter what colors are in the still life or in the painting that I am painting. Now I do this for a couple of reasons, laying out the paint the exact same way every time not only gets me into the mood of this is now painting time, but as well too it helps to make sure that when I'm mixing colors, I'm not being lazy and just reaching for colors that I think sure this gets me close enough. So if I have everything on my palette, I'll be more likely to experiment with colors and try new combinations. If it's not on my palette, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to reach for it. And I'm going to be limiting my choices and my selections. So I always lay out the exact same colors, the exact same way, in the exact same pattern. And that helps me just to stay organized. So when it comes to mediums, I do use a uh, linseed oil by Old Holland as well as Winsor Newton Liquid Original for my alkyd medium. I really love linseed oil because it actually speeds up the dry time a little bit and makes the oil painting dry a little bit faster. So for this technique which I'm using where I paint in layers and I want those layers to be completely dry in between, linseed oil is a really great option. When I'm working for something a little bit more that I want to work wet onto wet and I'm working over multiple days, then I'll use clove oil. And I really actually love the feel of clove oil and I really enjoy the way that it interacts with the medium and the paint. So that's something that I'll go to when I'm doing something where I'm using a wet on wet technique. So for my painting today, I'm going to be using a 50-50 mixture of linseed oil to alkyd medium. And that's what I'm gonna to use to cut my paint to thin it down just slightly. I always try to do this using a little container so that it controls I can control it and it doesn't spread all over my palette. Mix that up. Nice and well. Now for my brushes I use quite a variety. I have a lot of old Holland brushes that actually came with my education that I still use. Um, I use Filbert size 6, size 10 are my often go-to's as well as the numbers, what are these smaller ones here, the number 2's. Now Simply Simons is a little bit of a cheaper brand that you can often find at Michaels or Amazon, things like that, and they work just as well as some of the old Holland brushes, in my opinion. Um, and as well, I use a round brush. This is what I use for those small details to get into those really nitty gritty little details. I have been playing around with a couple of other brushes. I've been exploring the Princeton brushes that I've been using, and I just really love, especially this Princeton Velvet Touch. It's just such a soft brush that you can just get really sharp edges with but you can also just really kind of like get some really nice texture and things like that as with it as well too so I've really been enjoying playing around with that one as well I use fan brushes I'm sure you've seen some of that in my videos I'll use fan brushes to get rid of things like brush strokes or to create really extra soft gradients to get rid of any kind of texture or any kind of um, sharp edge especially in this new technique where I'm layering getting those really soft soft gradients just helps with just a very light touch just going over the painting with fan brush. Now the way that I set up my studio is that I have my easel and I have my still life box and there's at least three feet of distance between the two of them. But when I'm sitting on my easel I want to make sure that I can see 
my still life box without having to move my body position or to lean over to see. So when I'm sitting straight at my easel, I can see both my still life box and my canvas so that all I have to do is shift my eyes to make sure that my measurements are accurate and that I'm seeing everything in proportion. I'm left-handed, so I like to have my paint and I like to have my brushes and usually a glass of water and things like that on my left-hand side. And so for me, because I'm left-handed, I have my still life box set up on my right-hand side. So when I'm sitting here, I can see my still life box and I have my paints and my brushes right beside me. So if I'm painting in layers, I'll often have the palette that I used last time I painted right beside me so I can make sure that I'm color matching the best that I can, making sure that I'm matching colors. And I can also see what colors I predominantly use in the mixture so that it's easier for me to mix it a second time or for the second day. So I like to have paper towel on the floor right beside me and as well a garbage bag attached to my easel. Now this easel is really great because it has those little knobs so I just attach a garbage bag that way I make sure I'm collecting all of my paper towels while I work and they're not just falling all over the floor with paint everywhere and it just would make a mess. So this is a little thing that I've done to help keep me organized. Now I do use a mull stick while I work. Some artists find them helpful, some don't. I find it really helpful. I just rest it on the top of my easel and I can rest my palm on here while I paint rather than resting it on the canvas. Now I have done that before and all of a sudden you see these little splotches where the paint is lifted up and you wonder what it is. Well, it's often on the bottom of my hand. So I actually made this one myself just out of a dowel from the hardware store and I just drilled a hole into one of my kids' bouncy balls and placed some cloth on top so that I had something that I could then rest on the top of my easel. On my actual easel, I have a very thin piece of hardy board um, as well as a thicker piece of plywood. Now the piece of plywood just acts as a little bit of a backing for the easel but also adds a little bit of weight to my easel so that it doesn't move around as much. And the hardy board is what I actually tape my canvas to. Now I often work on loose canvas and I'll just tape it onto the hardy board. I find that really helpful because if I'm looking to get a sharp edge on maybe this side where I can't contort then I'll be able to flip this around or I'll be able to move it in and get nice and close or just kind of make whatever angle I need to work, work. So that's how I've set up my easel and that's what I found actually works really great for me. Okay, so I think that's gonna be it for me today. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope that you found it helpful. If not, I hope that you found it at least interesting. If you did, please give it a bit of a thumbs up. It really does help my channel. Now I actually have to go paint this painting, so that's going to be next week's video. So if you're interested or curious about that, consider subscribing and get notified. Take care, friends. Have a good one. Bye now.